Wait, did you just say you're the chosen one? You? <laughs> For the record, I'm laughing because I'm uncomfortable. Nickelodeon release a new show, Ollie's Pack. Is it good? Is it bad? Let's talk about it. But wait a minute, I'm not alone on this one. I bought my friend and fellow YouTuber, Jason Blade with me. We're going to discover, is Ollie Pack really worth it? Is it, is there anything there? Also plug in my Discord. Mm -hmm. Straight from Nick.com, they describe Ollie's pack as, quote, Ollie, a 13-year-old boy who, with the help of his best buddies Cleo and Bernie and monster trainer Captain Wowski, protects and controls a backpack portal to the world of monsters. I chose to do the sister episode to New Kid on Campus, which is The Chosen Ones, because this episode actually deals with the monster aspect a little bit more, whereas the other episode was a pretty slice of life show that just has this monster dude out of nowhere. To be on the same page, this is Ollie, quote, an ordinary, impulsive, and creative kid who has been given the status of Chosen One and Keeper of the Pack. This is Cleo, the quote, brave and adventurous comic relief. And this is Bernie, quote, the nervy and logical voice of reason. And this is CW, or Captain Welski. Not to compare too heavily, but when I hear of Ollie, I think of Ollie from Welcome to the Wayne, and I don't want this show to go down the way that that show did. No, I'll be honest. My knowledge of the current crop of shows for Nickelodeon is not my strongest. However, I think Ollie's pack does have some interesting features that could be good as time goes on. The overall art style is very brightly toned in nature, and the designs of the characters are simplistic with a few interesting attributes like the darker shade of each character's nose and ears. Many of the human characters have lengthy arms and legs that seem to stretch out to take up more space when they do certain actions. We see Ollie struggling with putting a toothpaste seal balloon monster in this book bag. I'm assuming that the portal can temporarily open or that he uses it to contain monsters, and I've seen comments comparing that aspect to glitch text. But there were other shows that have done that aspect before, like Danny Phantom, so it's not like glitch text were the first to try out that idea. I guess if you were looking at the abnormality of a short time between these shows coming out, then I guess it looks a little weird. I thought you said we'd get action shots, Ollie. This fight is less interesting than a park bench. Work it, bench, work it. The camera loves you. Oh, my back. Quite the thing to say, because Ollie is an interesting character. I've had the liberty to watch the sister episode to this, and he strikes me as an interesting fellow. Like Gumball, he's very prideful with a lack of reasons to be, and I really gel with that character, if my love for other shows such as Final Space, Ed, Ed and Eddie, and Regular Show are anything. I also do like the personality of the main protagonist that tests the idea of one having a fragile ego, which is what we see with how Ollie expresses his status in front of his friends, saying how he has it handled because he's the chosen one and needs to be the main one doing all the work. While this character trope is becoming more apparent these days, I think this is the first iteration we've seen from Nickelodeon. We also get a good example of the stretchy aspect of these characters too. When the monster hits Ollie, his body stretches out a bit like an elastic, making the punch look more impactful. I enjoy the art style. As bright and colorful as it is, and I hope later on I can successfully say that the show has carved out its own identity, as it's too early to tell. I also enjoy the character design of Ollie in particular. I love his hair and how he has that Welcome to the Wayne darker nose and ears combo. Obviously, he struggles with the monster as most of these shows tend to build towards the beginning until he receives some help that he didn't ask for. <laughs> We figured out that her name is Dahlia, and that she's the chosen one. From her design, she could possibly be an elf-like character, with her ears being more pointy and also sharp teeth with lines that are said to be more like whiskers. I'd say her intro overall was okay for the most part, there isn't much of a wow factor here animation wise, but I do think what makes up for that is the soundtrack that was used here. It fit well with the overall sequence between Dahlia and the monster, and it made her seem like someone you really don't want to mess with. Even though I'm not too crazy about Cleo's character, that was pretty good. I also think that the action here is pretty good. I'm also not too crazy 
crazy about the music composition, as I feel like I'm slowly getting tired of the quote, electronic, gamey, and minimalistic style of cartoon music scores. Although Ollie isn't thrilled to have his spot taken, hiding his embarrassment and trying to act cool seems to be his go-to. I like her design as well, but it's with her design that I really start to notice the amount of shows with noodle arms. How do you guys feel about that? Let me know in the comments below. Last week, I corralled space whales in the Geo Quadrant and gave separate spankings to both Fang Lords of Kuti. You know, fighting actual tough monsters. You mean the monsters we've been fighting are the easy ones? It's very clear that she doesn't have any respect for Ollie at all from a piece of gum she slapped on his palm. It shows how much of a punk Ollie is as well. If someone had the audacity to slap some freaking gum in my hand after first meeting them, I would throw hands immediately. That disgusting behavior needed to get checked immediately. Since Ollie didn't do that, I think it solidifies how far apart these two are when it comes to status. She really gives off that cool character well, and I feel like her friends being very receptive, contrasting against his clear forced disapproval of her because of envy is what makes this really work. One thing that will come into play later is that we see that she's super fast, pretty strong, and knows how to use weapons that Ollie didn't even know that he had. Keep that in mind for later. Although she laughs at his face and thinks that he needs a lot more practice, she offers to help him, seeing that he's the chosen one and all. He initially denies, but his friends basically confirm that he has nothing else to do. So he's put in a spot now where he has to receive said help. I could show you a few things. Nah, I'm good. Ollie? Your plan this afternoon was to make a plan for this evening? Okay, yeah. I don't think that brave and adventurous comic relief is aging very well here. Cleo is seeming more like the snarky jerk than an adventurous seeker. Not that the line itself is wrong, now, as a matter of fact it continues to back Ollie in a quarter which is needed. However, it could have been done in a different way to help fit the prescription more. Dahlia also labels Ollie a soft taco. And I agree with Ollie. I'd rather be a hard taco. Because hard tacos are better than soft tacos, it's just a fact. I'm a reviewer, I should know. She takes them to this forest area where apparently she was also holding a helmet because when Ollie takes off his, it cuts to her who has it on. It's kind of confusing there. But we get a little bit more insight to her character. She fixates on Ollie's book bag and we see that she knows about a weapon that's inside it. Why were you fighting that class zero creature without your monster lasso? I don't know. I guess Captain Wowski doesn't trust you yet. He gave it to me my first week. So we know that Captain Wowski is a mentor or sensei to Ollie and that CW is solely teaching Ollie about how to protect wherever he's located, whatever town he's in. We also know that CW and Dahlia have a previous relationship and that CW is only known between Bernie and Cleo. Lots of great information to know. Give me that before you hurt yourself, Polly. It's Ollie. Ollie, Polly, same diff. It does get pretty annoying. It's like how when you beat a tough boss in your eyes in a video game after an hour, then some snarky kid comes in trying to look fly, saying that he beat it in 20 minutes. Like, congrats! I'm sure that the developer visited your grandma to go down to the basement to shake your cheesy Dorito hand, saying how good of a job you did. Have a cookie. Get out of here. I like how while she's maintaining this super cool image for herself, she's also bringing Ollie down with her level of knowledge. Another subtle thing in this episode is that between the two friends, Cleo really likes Dahlia and wants to get on her good side, but it's a one-way street as Dahlia doesn't really care for Ollie or his friends. Ollie clearly fails with the lasso, but more importantly, he hands his book bag over to Dahlia, which will be important later. Gravity, not my friend. Need your help, Bernie. To help. I'm the chosen one. You're just regular kids. I'm the special one. Me. She doesn't even notice you, okay? You're just my plus one. Honestly, screw this guy. I don't have sympathy for this dude. It seems like the blow up really came out of nowhere against these two when all they did was try to help his fragile ego stay up and gave Dahlia a little praise for her skill set. While yes, it's true that Dahlia did have a play at pushing him over the edge, it's not like the two were kissing her feet in glory. It would have been different if they made comments about how better Dahlia is constantly, but that didn't happen. So it feels like it's blown way out of proportion and it makes Ollie look more like a fragile jerk than he really needed to be. That's been the main issue with making characters like Ollie. You have to find those moments where you can understand his logic while not agreeing with his tactics. You need to see where he's coming from 
and it doesn't get played with a lot, if at all. It comes off as someone who's extremely ungrateful. We see that Ali is super full of himself, being very mean towards Cleo and Bernie. However, it seems a little empty, as the writing doesn't have that punch that really seals the deal of the dialogue. In a sense, the dialogue is very soft and weak here, and it's hard for me to be that invested in the show, because it feels like I'm watching an elementary school play. There needs to be conviction, not to the point of yelling or screaming, but actually believing the words that you say. And Ollie, in the pair of episodes that are out that I've seen, he suffers with that. I like to believe that this is going to be improved on as more episodes come out, you know, just looking at things in an optimistic sense. So he blows off his friends and he calls them a plus one, and CW reveals important information about his former mentee, Dahlia. I had to fire Dahlia because the power of the pack went to her head! She's bad, Ollie, real bad! She picks fights! If she gets the pack, it's game over for the galaxy, man! Who would I be if I just let the backpack out of my sight? I I literally gave it right to her earlier. We learned that Dahlia is actually not a good person this whole time. When Ollie dipped, Claudia was very quick to recruit his friends. We cut to CCW giving him that encouraging mentor talk to make him feel better, then he realized that Dahlia is in this mix, and that's when we find out that she turns out to be a villain. What a very lackluster and predictable plot twist. Then we get to the action scene. Surely a show about a kid with a book bag full of monsters would have plenty of action in it, right? Well, you would be right if it's another show you're talking about. Ollie's pack, so far, I really want to make that clear, so far, reeled its action back to about a 5 out of 10 at most on a good day. It seems choreographed solidly but I don't have the immersion to really want to see more of this. It's basic and nothing in it really comes across as creative, just functional. Not only that, but it negatively affects Dahlia's character because we were shown earlier in the episode that she's fast, she's witty, she knows how to use the weapons, and she's also pretty strong. She fails to not see a giant purple alien come to her side and gets pushed into a tree. Really? A tree? Out of all the action we've seen so far, this was the most fun I've seen in this episode, which isn't saying a lot. I did like how Ollie yeeted CW right into Dahlia in order to grab the lasso. Bad jokes? Yes. Delivery and interaction between Ollie and Dahlia? They're pretty cute. It's clear that they're trying their hardest to make Ollie that flawed, egotistical child. While it is one of the better attempts at showing his negative attributes, I can't help but feel it's a bit too forced. I can applaud Liz for trying something at least somewhat different from what we're used to from Nickelodeon's perspective with their main protagonist. I still think it's going to take a lot to really make him a likable character, and it wouldn't fit your usual Nick demographic. Uh, uh, later, Dahlia. Uh. I said, later, Dahlia! You said that already! Oh, sorry, wasn't sure if you heard. Ah, more of that Nickelodeon humor that never seems to hit me. I've always been intrigued in the writing differences between a Nickelodeon show and a Cartoon Network show. It always seemed to me that a Nickelodeon cartoon was targeting a younger audience. And by that, I don't mean the obvious, a younger audience. I mean, between the two networks, if you were to separate the demographic of children starting as young as like five or six and then extending that range towards about 15 or 16, it always seemed that Nickelodeon has been focusing recently if it's Pony, the Casa Grandes, and all the Lego shows and Alvin and the Chipmunks or anything, that they're focusing on the younger half of that demographic and then Cartoon Network is focusing on the older half of that demographic. Like let's take the shows I just mentioned, it's Pony, the Lego shows, the Casa Grandes, Arbuck, you don't necessarily hear about these shows having an edge or having this episode that has this giant mature underlying layer that would appeal to teens and adults. In that sense, with the more family-friendly spin, I would imagine that some families, only the children may find it entertaining because of these shows squeaky clean appeal. I love animation, so I don't mind watching Nickelodeon's brand of shows, but because they're very safe, and you don't hear about them making big stands to talk about something that might not be advertiser friendly, I can totally understand why people who grew up on Hey Arnold, early Spongebob, Ren and Stimpy, Rocko's Modern Life, The Angry Beavers, with its clever writing 
that only got better with age would look at shows like the former bunch that I mentioned and not think much about it because there's other media that is speaking to what they would want to see. However, just because it's not what we had before and it's not what Nickelodeon is trying to target the demographics with before, does that mean that this show is bad now? I don't think so because this brand of animation lends itself to telling more endearing stories happier stories, feel good stories that may not be as deep but definitely serve as a great piece of entertainment that children can immerse themselves into without thinking. I don't think we need every show to stand on a stool and shout something or create this 22 minute epic involving a meticulously structured storyline that leads up to this heavy emotional finish. Sometimes a show can just be a show that you enjoy watching. It can be a show that makes you feel good. It can be a show that you simply enjoy because because you feel engrossed in the characters and the story that it tells. When Ollie was able to free his friends, he finally was willing to let them help against Dahlia. And they beat her in a flawless fashion. <laughs> All that boasting about beating space lords and going after high class monsters just to get duped by a bunch of 10 year olds that laid a simple bunny trap? She fell into soft taco status in my opinion because that is weak. You disappoint me Dahlia. The chosen ones are guardians, not hunters. Yeah, but I don't have much to guard and no friends. You don't know how good you've got it. I do now. Wow. You honestly have to be kidding me. <sighs> This is why Nickelodeon is not taken seriously when new shows come around. Where the heck did this whole I'm so lonely gimmick came from? You mean to tell me that Dahlia picks fights with others not for attention, fame, or glory, but because she's desperate to find someone to be buddies with? Sorry Chief, this ain't it. So basically this show is going to try its hardest to not create recurring villains from what it looks like in this episode. I'm sorry, but this is not the type of show you want to go on that hill. I think Dahlia at least serving the purpose as an enemy turned rival could have been a good thing because having those true truly battle it out from time to time could give more support for Ollie as a character you want to see grow. But nah, let's just forget all the crappy things she did because she's lonely and needs a friend to hang out with. She ain't even good enough to be a soft taco anymore. She's turned into those cheap taco salads you make with leftover ground beef. Overall, the episode is uneventful for the most part in all honesty. On paper, I think Nickelodeon giving the nod of having a protagonist that has more glaring flaws is a step in the right direction to having a bit more diversity in that crop. There's still quite a good number of hits and misses in that particular episode. With the concept of having a magical backpack that can send monsters back to their realm and having an infinite supply of weapons, they have to go in a lot more on the action. His actual friends let him know that he's not off the hook for calling them his plus ones, and that was the choices. I thought it was primarily in the middle. It didn't wow me as something I'd seen Nickelodeon putting trust in for years, but with some refining, I can see this doing decently well. I think if they leaned into the monster collecting element and really drove up the action, then we would see something a little bit more desirable to me, but Nickelodeon isn't marketing towards me, so we'll just have to see in the rating. Guys, make sure to check out Jason Blade if you love my content, you'll love his content. He has content on Infinity Train, Total Drama Rama. He did a video on Regular Show. He also did a video on the NFL Nickelodeon thing. It'll be in a pinned comment. It'll be in the card. It'll be in the description. You can't miss it. Make sure to check him out, guys. Until then, special thanks to the supporters of April. And until next time, take care. Alpha out.